Moira O'Shea is a 65-year-old grandmother with three children. Until recently, she was consultant psychiatrist at the John Connolly Hospital in Birmingham. Moira O'Shea is innocent. Drop the charges now. Moira O'Shea is innocent. Drop the charges now. Moira O'Shea is innocent. Drop the charges now. We're all members of the Moira O'Shea Support Committee. Moira was charged with conspiracy to cause an explosion. We all believe she's innocent. We're all friends and patients, political colleagues, and of course, Moira's daughter, Deirdre. We all know that Moira is innocent of the conspiracy charge lodged against her. Yes, I mean, the, the Labour Party has recently uh, decided to oppose the Prevention of Terrorism Act and because of the fact that Moira is a member of the local Labour Party branch, people in the area have rallied round her cause and the way in which the PTA has been used has been exposed in this instance. And we've, we've actually organised the campaign starting from this local area, from our friends and colleagues, and we've taken that campaign across Birmingham to the West Midlands region of the Labour Party and we found tremendous support at that conference um, for Moira and for opposition to the, to the PTA. And in actual fact, we felt that at conference there was a majority support to oppose the PTA. So Moira's case has actually brought to the forefront the whole way in which the PTA is used against Irish people and restricts their rights. Some years ago, the Labour Party nationally uh, took a decision to oppose uh, the PTA. Um, and although um, there hasn't been a great deal of campaign activity around it, Morris case has brought the use of it to people's attention. The, the point really is that the PTA has been increasingly used against ordinary members of the Labour Party, Labour mm -hmm. councillors, people who are opposed to the use of the conspiracy laws, people who are opposed to the maintenance of the British Army in Ireland, who are being taken in and questioned purely on their political beliefs and it's nothing to do with terrorism whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And of course the fact is that the use of the PTA is closely linked to the conspiracy laws because when people are held incommunicado without access to lawyer for seven days then very often due to the stress of the situation um, the police can find that they can co uh, make evidence against them which can later be used in conspiracy charges. How long have you known Moira Pat? About four and a half years. And she became, that was when she became your doctor? Yeah, she did my GP and referred me to Moira and I went along to see with the social worker. I understand you were very ill at that time. I was, yes. Um, I was on drugs, quite a lot of drugs. I couldn't communicate. I was very isolated and Moira's really helped me and brought back my confidence. And how, are the, um, how have the other patients reacted to Moira's arrest? Well, they all felt pretty desperate, and when we heard about Moira's arrest, um, we wondered what was going to happen to us. Um, no one contacted us or made any arrangements for us to have psychotherapy. And I think we, we all felt that uh, Moira's sentence was going to become ours because we were on our own. So since Moira has been arrested, you've had no formal medical treatment? No, nobody's um, shown any concern whatsoever. And how do you feel that Moira, your treatment under Moira changed you? Well, I, I feel that I'm, I'm a different person now um, to what I was four and a half years ago. I mean, Moira has said to me that then that um, I was really quite ill, mentally ill. You know, I was being treated for schizophrenia. And in fact, I was, it was just depression. Moira got me off the drugs, psychotherapy, regular psychotherapy sessions helped me. Uh, I'm now at college, I'm doing exams uh, next year, something that I thought I'd never be able to do. And uh, are all the other patients, outpatients, uh, supporting Moira in her campaign to prove her innocence? They are, yes. Yeah. And they're all very concerned about what's happening to Moira. Deirdre, you've been coordinating the work with the patients. Yes. And what form has that taken? 
well, when my mother got bail on the 8th of February, on the Monday, on the 11th, uh, the chief medical officer, district medical officer, came round and delivered her a letter to, uh, to instruct her not to go back to work and also not to enter NHS property. So we organised pickets on the Area Health Authority, uh, including a lot of patients who were involved in that activity. Uh, we collected signatures from social workers and doctors and patients and handed them in. Deirdre, how do you regard the Health Authority's uh, attitude in not allowing your mother to continue with the work? Well, it's making a lot of people angry and it seems that the Health Authority is prepared to judge her before the court does, before a trial and jury. Has there been any support from medical colleagues? Yes, there's been a lot of support from local GPs uh, because they've nowhere to refer patients to now. Well, Moira phoned me from Cork when she was on holiday in Ireland on New Year's Eve to say that a neighbour had rung her uh, and told her that her house had been raided by the police. She asked me to speak out and make complaints against this, uh, about this, uh, to speak out to politicians, trade unionists and to, to the press. Most recently I've been in the, in the Irish and Britain representation group. I've been on the NEC of that, I'm now the president of it. Uh, and that, I think, may be seen as a threat by the, by the state, by the British state, because it has, has the Irish community in this country, uh, if properly organised and led, uh, has, a poten has, has a great potential for influencing decision-making in this country, because it's the largest it's the largest uh, minority group in this country, uh, but it has been, it hasn't been organised up, up to very recently, and the IBRG is a grassroots organisation, which is, uh, it's being built. It's not, it hasn't sort of achieved its potential yet, but it's being built, and and it by um, getting the Irish community recognised as a as a. Uh, as an ethnic minority group, uh, at least by the GLC, which is a very powerful body, and getting um, facilities for uh, or maintaining the Irish identity among the second generation Irish in this country, uh, by, by getting facilities for teaching the Irish language and Irish history and uh, Irish cultural activities like music, dancing, Irish games, uh, it has begun to increase the confidence of of the Irish in this country, and uh, to make them feel that they that they they can make demands on on both on the British government and on the Irish government. I think the reaction of um, people like myself and uh, other members of the Aston's Health Service branch, when we first heard of Moira's detention on the radio, was was one of shock and we tried to move immediately to um, publicise the fact that she had been detained. Um, we attempted to arrange visits from union members um, who were uh, living in Liverpool and um, we also raised the issue of Moira's ill health and uh, asked that she be seen um, not just by the police surgeon but by her own general practitioner. And uh, I think this sort of pressure was quite useful because she was seen by her own doctor. Uh, and also, um, after a few days of detention, um, the police actually released a, a bulletin about her health, which is uh, something quite extraordinary as far as people detained under the PTA is concerned. I think the first thing I want to say is that it's great credit to both the Medical Practitioners Union and to the local branch that what they've done is to raise the consciousness on, on two issues. There, there's the personal subject of Myra, which is uh, it's quite disgraceful, but they focused attention on the whole question of the Prevention of Terrorism Act and Conspiracy Act, so that we've rethought our opposition to it. Uh, it's easy enough to talk about the problems of uh, people that aren't close to you, but when Moira was caught up in 
the episodes in January, which has gone on and on and on, we've really seen how the disgraceful pair of acts work. We've had the full support of the Divisional Council. They've talked to other Divisional Councils, and that's culminated this month in our annual conference with an expression from our annual conference which does two things. One, it pledges within the rules of this association to give whatever support is possible to Moira. But secondly, to carry out an intensive campaign through what is our 30 members of parliament and the Lords against the continuance of the Prevention of Terrorism Act and the application of conspiracy laws. We've got our mind absolutely focused now on these two issues. Firstly, of course, and much more important, we've got to ensure that, that Moira is released and that the forthcoming um, trial um, has found that there is no case against her. We're going to be sending observers up to the trial uh, from the Divisional Council and from elsewhere to see that she gets a fair trial and to see that the others get a fair trial and to report back on the workings of, of this disgraceful piece of legislation.